Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer with St. John's Episcopal Church in Bangor, Maine on the second day of Lent. Today, the church remembers Thomas Bray, um, priest and missionary, 1730. The church in colonial America was um, often neglected and badly used by both Englishmen and Americans. But the church had a great champion in Thomas Bray, the Bishop of London's commissary to Maryland, an Oxford professor as well as a priest. He took very seriously the task of educating poor clergymen, laymen, and children. His understanding of and concern for Native Americans and other people of color were far ahead of his time. He founded church libraries and schools in England and America, raised money for missionary endeavors, and influenced young English priests to try their vocations in America. He fought long to get an American bishop consecrated, but failed. He founded two of our church's most effective missionary organizations, the Society for Promoting Christian Knowledge and the Society for the Propagation of the Gospel in Foreign Parts, now United Society for the Propagation of the Gospel, both still in operation after two and a half centuries. The deplorable condition of England's prisons was of grave concern, uh, pun intended, to Thomas Bray. Uh, sorry, not a pun. Uh, he organized Sunday beef and beer dinners in those prisons and went to Parliament with proposals for prison reform. It was Thomas Bray who first suggested to General Oglethorpe the idea of founding a humanitarian colony for the relief of honest debtors. But he died before seeing this the Georgia colony, a reality. Few clergymen have taken more seriously our Lord's command, feed my sheep. Now let us begin. We will start on page 76 and quickly move to page 80. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and repents of evil. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Turning to page 82, let us say together the Benite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Psalm. This morning we will read a portion of Psalm 37, found on page 633, verses 1 through 18, whole verse responsibly. Do not fret yourself because of evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither, wither like the grass, and like the green grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on its riches. Take delight in the Lord, and he shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will make your righteousness as clear as the light and your just dealing as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret yourself over the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger. Leave rage alone. Do not fret yourself. It leads only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. 
In a little while, the wicked shall be, shall be no more. You shall search out their place, but they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash at them with their teeth. The Lord laughs at the wicked because he sees that their day will come. The wicked draw their sword and bend their bow to strike down the poor and needy, to slaughter those who are upright in their ways. Their sword shall go through their own heart and their bow shall be broken. The little that the righteous has is better than great riches of the wicked. For the power of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from um, the book of ha the prophet Habakkuk. A prayer of the prophet Habakkuk, according to Shigionoth. O Lord, I have heard of your renown, and I stand in awe, O Lord, of your work. In our own time, revive it. In our own time, make it known. In wrath, may you remember mercy. God came from Teman, the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. The brightness was like the sun. Rays came forth from his hand, where his power lay hidden. Before him went pestilence, and plague followed close behind. He stopped and shook the earth. He looked and made the nations tremble. The eternal mountains were shattered along his ancient pathways. The everlasting hills sank low. I saw the tents of Cushan under affliction. The tent curtains of the land of Midian trembled. Was your wrath against the rivers, O Lord? Or your anger against the rivers? Or your rage against the sea? When you drove your horses, your chariots, to victory, you brandished your naked bow, sated were the arrows at your command. You split the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and writhed. A torrent of water swept by. The deep gave forth its voice. The sun raised high its hands. I hear and I tremble within. My lips quiver at the sound. Rottenness enters into my bones, and my steps tremble beneath me. I wait quietly for the day of calamity to come upon the people who attack us. Though the fig tree does not blossom, and no fruit is on the vines, though the produce of the olive fails, and the fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold, and there is no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exult in the God of my salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first canticle. We will read canticle eight, found on page 85, the song of Moses. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my savior. This is my God, and I will praise him. The God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretched forth your right hand. The earth, the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you let the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession. The resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, 
the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand is established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Not that I have already obtained this, or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own. Because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us then who are mature be of the same mind. And if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have attained. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction. Their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. And it is from there that we are expecting a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second canticle. We will read together Canticle 19, found on page 94, The Song of the Redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you had given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now let us turn to page 96 and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffer just be. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God of compassion, you opened the eyes of your servant, Thomas Bray, to see the needs of the church in the new world and led him to found societies to meet those needs. Make the church in this land diligent at all times to propagate the gospel among those who have not received it and to promote the spread of Christian knowledge through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, Drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now as we pray for the needs of the church and the world, I invite your own intercessions, petitions, or thanksgivings. We pray for the church, for our Anglican communion and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for the Diocese of North Carolina in the Episcopal Church, for our Episcopal Church and Michael, our presiding bishop, for di our Diocese of Maine and Thomas, our bishop, for the congregations of All Saints, Skowhegan, and Trinity, Lewiston, for our Committee on Indian Relations, for our Parish of St. John's, our priest James, and for all our people. We pray for the sick, injured, or distressed, for Matt, Bobby, Billy, Will, Joey, Patrick, Jane, Darren, and Jessica. We offer continued prayers for Louise, presiding Bishop Michael Curry, Lily, Corky, Oliver, Liam, Nancy, Andrew, Barry, Susan, Sarah, Ross, James, and Pyong. We pray for our homebound members, including Robert, Krista, Lily, Erlene, and Eileen. We pray for the world for peace and goodwill among nations and for peoples in places of violence or oppression and for the many places in our world where there is danger and desperation. We continue to pray especially for the people of Ukraine and the innocent victims of the fighting in Gaza, for all suffering effects of climate change and of natural disasters, that the peoples of all nations will find ways to mitigate the climate crisis by cooperating with God's earth for our enemies and those who wish us harm, and that all people come to understand that the best solution for conflict, whether far or near, 
is to first expand our understanding of who our neighbors are and then love those neighbors as ourselves. We pray for our own nation, for the healing of divisions and the celebration of diversity, for the recognition that no single viewpoint on any issue, no matter how important, is without human error, and for all who struggle to change our world and its systems of oppression and exploitation. We pray for the leaders of our country, state, and community, for Joseph, our president, for our members of Congress, especially Susan, Angus, Shelley, and Jared of Maine, for Janet, our governor, and Kara, our mayor, and for those responsible for administering justice in the courts of this land, that they all may serve our nation and the world with wisdom, civility, and compassion. We pray for our military personnel, especially those of this parish, Sarah, Dylan, Joshua, and Timothy. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for the lives of those celebrating birthdays during this week, including Christine, Scott, and Luna. We pray for the departed, for Myra Cross and Marshall Nettles, victims of the wars in Ukraine and the Holy Land, and for the many victims of gun violence in this country, and for all who mourn for them. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now turning to page 101, let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray. Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now let us say together a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We wish you a blessed day and hope to see you again tomorrow morning at nine.